The Streamy Awards, in my opinion, have got to be one of the cringiest slash funniest award shows I have ever seen. And by funny, I mean in the sense that I'm laughing at you and not with you. I don't know much about this year's nominees, but last year's wouldn't make anyone think that this year is going to be better than the last. When your award show includes an award for just chatting, meaning you're just talking, you're not reviewing anything, playing a game, cooking, they base this award off who talked the best, and ironically, it went to the person who we can barely understand. Some other awards that didn't make sense to me were the Lifestyle Award going to AMP this year, but Charlie D'Amelio last year, and it's not because she won, but it's like, what the fuck does that mean? It says the criteria to become a nominee are all of these, and I guess short form would be her category, if anything, because she's not any of the other ones as of recently. I'm just glad she beat out Brett Rivera. I hate you, Brent, but realistically, what did she do to get nominated? This ain't 2019. She didn't do shit to get nominated for. She went and created her own shoe brand, and you know when her last YouTube video was? Eight months ago. The fact that she got put into the same category as Mr. Beast for people to be like, hmm, I wonder who the better creator is, shows me that someone doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. There's also this category called First Person, and I thought it was a video game award, but then I saw Danny Duncan, and I'm like, so it's like a vlogger award. And that's exactly what it is. I'm surprised David Dobrik still isn't nominated. I don't know why it's called First Person, though, when their videos are clearly them being filmed for 99% of the video. The editing award went to the channel Yes Theory, and that's a step up from last year's winner cooking with Linja. I don't know if this was based off her TikTok or anything, but they had Mr. Beast on there as if his edits weren't like every other YouTuber who has a younger audience. The best editor, three hands down, is the Cold Ones editor. Watch one video of that and it makes it look like I was the one editing the cooking with Linja videos. The category brand of the year is hilarious to me and had to have been something the sponsors agreed on because I have never seen an award show nominate the best brand. While this year's brands were a little more coherent with each other, last year's were not. They had Harry Potter, Insta360, Old Spice, Spongebob, and Tampax. These brands are so unalike, I don't even think the voting was fair. Tampax and Spongebob is such a random combination, unless it was like a joint nomination. Who was going in the voting and being like, I wonder what's more influential, Tampax or Spongebob? Well, I'm not a girl and I'm like 12. And if you use the Tampax brand, whatever flavor it may be, then hey, you can probably agree with me when I ask, why the fuck was that an option? And how were these the nominees for brand engagement? It says they have to have a campaign that utilizes influencers and content creators to help people engage with their brand. Are they saying Danny DeVito and Brad Garrett are content creators? Because Jersey Mike's doesn't have iShow speed in their commercials. They are trying way too hard to be different, but still include everyone, which ends up with them having categories that include Duke Dennis and Livy Dunn. In the last year, Duke has uploaded 54 videos Eight of them are about sports. And that was me just reading all that to you. Imagine having to sit through all that. Whoever they got to present would make up for it, right? Well, if you think having the person who started the worst trend on TikTok present an award, then yeah, you're right. So when I said I watched the awards, I lied. I watched one clip because after I realized that was all I needed to see. I get that the Streamy Awards are here to celebrate the social media side of things, but when you get people who are even considered D-list celebrities in the social media world to be a part of it, that's when you know you fucked up. They got Pinky Doll, the NPC girl, to present an award. Now I feel bad for the other girl who's with her because she's an actual influencer, but she got paired up to present with the worst possible person. This clip I'm about to show you makes what Kanye did to Taylor acceptable. Sass Streamies, we are so happy to be here tonight. Yes, yes, yes. I can so good. Imagine being in that audience and cheering after you hear that. How brain dead do you have to be? You know she was waiting all night to say that too, because nobody would have known who she was if she didn't. She basically did the reverse Sammy Sosa before coming on stage. I can so good. <laughs> gang gang. Why was this guy fist pumping? And did you hear the audience? They are loving it. They're cheering like she won the award. Even the other girl is like, yep, mm-hmm, that's pretty good. I think that means we should announce the nominees for streamer of the year. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Just look at the other girl's face. She is never going to present an award with anyone ever again. And if I was her, I wouldn't even come back after they paired me up with Pinky Doll. You can hear the audience in real time realize that shit gets annoying quick. I love you. <laughs> the girl is even like, I'm trying to help you. Let's present the award. Come on, let's wrap it up. And the Pinky Doll thinks everyone's gonna give her gifts and as if she's not presenting an actual award. 
in real life, not on TikTok. And streamer of the year for that matter. She's trying to make this all about herself so much that I can actually feel the secondhand embarrassment her co-presenter is feeling. This was supposed to be, say your lines, have the people cheer, and then move on. But she dragged this out for over a minute. And instead of just presenting like everyone wants her to, if she would have done another one of her catchphrase, everyone would have started booing. But instead of just presenting, she heard how quiet the audience got, and she's like, let me just make sure these guys know I'm not really like this. Oh, yes. I'm just playing, guys. You know, I can be normal sometimes. I mean, all the times. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> the nominee... <laughs> Let me talk, let me talk, please, please, guys. And the nominees is... She couldn't even get that out normal. Why did she have a British accent? And the nominees... This girl deserves an award herself just for being up there through all this. If I was there, I wouldn't have been smiling. They would have pictures of me just looking at her like... Oh, yes. I'm just playing, guys. You know, I can be... The disrespect I would have felt if I was a famous TikToker and they chose her over me. That's like Time Magazine picking Harambe to be their person of the year in 2016. And actually, come to think of it, it, it was Donald Trump who was their person of the year. Yes, I did Google it before the video. I pray to Satan that this is her final seconds of her 15 seconds of fame because this is one of those prime sponsored by Logan Paul examples that we shouldn't make just anyone famous. I want to see the list of people who they had in mind for this and why they chose her and why they thought her trend was the best. Everyone who did her trend was making fun of her until they saw how much money she had and then they started doing it as if they weren't the ones talking shit. And the funniest thing to me about all this is that I thought this was the Streamer Awards, which is another award show that is exactly like this one, which even Wikipedia doesn't want you to confuse the two. But yeah, guys, after this, I'm probably never going to watch the Streamy Awards, if I ever was. I feel bad for Enola Bedard, who was the other girl that was presenting the award. And to this person, I don't know how long the video is, but it's got to be close to eight minutes. I mean, if it's not eight, it's got to be at least one, right? See you next week. Peace.